Tres Marias. That's what my father affectionately calls me and my sisters after my mom, Maria. There are five of us in the family. Catherine was born in 1997 in Canada when I was 13 years old. Charisse and I were born in the Philippines. For a while, there were just three of us in the family. My dad, me, and Charisse. Growing up, my mom was far, far away. You see, in 1985, my mom ventured on her own to Norway before migrating to Canada, working as a domestic worker. I was only two years old and Charisse was 11 months. That was two decades ago, yet Nancy Quinion share a similar story now. In 2000, Nancy was forced to leave for abroad, leaving her three young children, Horace, who was nine years old, John, who was only six, and her baby girl, Trini Ann, only two years old. Through tears and sweat, both mothers willingly endure the long separation from us, their children, to give us better opportunities in life. This is the story of a Filipino nanny. An estimated 8 million Filipinos have been forced to work abroad because of poverty and lack of sustainable jobs. Philippines has no industries of its own, so it can't support uh, this, this pool, this huge pool of labor. The Philippines' major export is human labor, stripping Filipino children from their own mothers. It's really hard for me to accept that uh, I left them alone just to look for a better income for, to support them. In Canada, the majority of Filipino women enter through the Living Caregiver Program, also known as LCP. Most women are living domestic workers for affluent Canadian families. What does a nanny do for the children they care for? You need to feed them, you need to wash their clothes, and you need to take them to the school. Taking care of the children is not the only task the caregiver has. Cleaning, cooking, and washing clothes take up a good chunk of their time at work. Life is not easy. Caregivers have to complete 24 months of domestic work within three years before they can apply to be immigrant and receive full Canadian benefits. Is this cheap labor? If, if it were a Canadian worker doing the caregiving job, then that worker would be entitled to all the benefits. Being a nanny is the only job in Canada that requires them to live with their boss. Living in an employer's home, because it's a private home, first it's not regulated, so there's no one to, there's no one to oversee or, or ensure that whatever is stated in the contract is what's being done in the home. Many caregivers are professionals back home, but they swallow their pride to earn money to support their families. Going abroad is not heaven, actually. It is hard work, determination, and a great sacrifice. That sacrifice for mothers is being away from their own children. The Filipino word nanay sounds so much like nanny that it's easy to assume they mean the same thing. Close, but not quite. A nanay would be the Tagalog equivalent of mother or mommy even. The first family that I came, uh, that I met, I worked with was a Jewish family. Marlene Cayman and Joel Cayman. Marlene had two children. One girl, which is three and a half, and a baby boy, which is uh, less than a year, one year old. With Filipino women who are working as nannies, I think it's also a way of, you know, they, a lot of them leave their children in the Philippines. And when they take care of children, the children of their employers here, I think whatever affection that they would like to, that they would like to show their children because they're far away, that's, that's how they, you know, they just pour all of that affection into, into the, the children that they're taking care of. When I see the kids, I said, oh, maybe my kid is also growing like this. She's always uh, running around and, and calling me, mommy, mommy. The other side of it is sometimes the relationship between, um, between the caregiver and her own children is 
compromised because, because, just because of the distance mainly. In March 1990, Maria went back home for the first time since leaving, staying only for two weeks. This was the first time Cherise met her mother. It took like five years, so I was like five and a half. She was running to my mother, not to me, at the door. I remember that. It's been nine years since Nancy was together with her children. She is sad she cannot witness her children's rites of passage, especially with her daughter, Trini Ann, who needed her the most as she enters womanhood. She was scared. She, she knows nothing about this, what happened to her. So I was sad because I was not there to help her to explain why. It's Friday night. Nancy heads home for the weekend to her apartment that she shares with seven women. It's a two and a half hour travel from Unionville to Toronto. She hurries to talk to John and Trinian via webcam. It's 10.15 p.m. here and it's 10.15 a.m. Saturday morning in the Philippines. Nancy's face lights up upon seeing her children. Trinian longs for her mom. The best Christmas I had was the December 24, 1991. That's the time they arrived in Canada. After six years, my family was reunited. I was eight. Families still face challenges during reunion because over the years, mothers and children become strangers. There is an adjustment period. But the most important thing of all is that families are together. Nancy trudges along on a road most traveled by many Filipino mothers. In her children's eyes, she is a hero. Because of the discrimination many nannies experience, is their work valued in the Canadian society? We are the ones you would trust your children with. Why would you look so lowly upon a caregiver when if you trust them with the life of your child, then why would you have such a low regard for them? because the work they're doing is valuable. And that's what I would say to anyone who, who, who questions the value of, of the work of a caregiver. In about a year, Nancy will be with her children. As a mother, Nancy wants to see a society where parents do not have to choose between the relationship with her children and the future of her children. I'm dreaming of a society where there, there's no family apart just to earn money to support them. So my dream is uh, to be with my family again in the future. 